After a quick initial sketch of white charcoal, I begin to fill in areas of the juniper with chromatic black and cad orange. I'm trying to first establish a composition with some of these darker tones and the sagebrush down below. I only have about an hour and a half until sunset, so I have to work quickly. For the sagebrush, I'm using light gray with a touch of cad yellow. And for the sand and dirt down below, I add more cad red and a bit more white. I'm trying to keep my paint layer fairly thin at this point in order to allow me to add more paint over the top more easily later on. I've lost my direct sunlight in the foreground, so I move quickly to the background. I'm liking the way the hills are fading off into blue at this point, so I try to capture that. The colors I'm using for these distant ridges is thalo blue, a touch of cobalt blue, and then black and white. And I'm going very light on the blues. As I begin to build the layers closer to the foreground, I add more gray and a touch less saturation in my blues. This creates more of a violet or purplish feel to the color, providing an excellent sense of atmosphere as those hills becoming closer start to appear more red as they actually are. I've come to terms with the fact that I've lost my sunlight for the remainder of the day. I'll have to use my imagination and do my best to complete this. As the sun gets lower, the sky begins to glow. It's the perfect display of colors for what I have going on. So I grab some cad orange, some cad yellow, a little bit of red, and quickly add those colors to the sky. With the light now beginning to fade, I'll have to leave this one until later. Back at camp, I worked on this painting off and on a bit more over the next couple days. I'm still in search of a technique and process that I both enjoy and can do efficiently on location in plein air. So by reworking this painting a little more, I feel as if it allows me to teach myself some of those things and understand some of those things that will help me out in the field. And one of those things is a brush that will give me both the effect I'm after and the versatility that's required to do a variety of objects in a scene such as this or anything outside. When painting the second layer, I use a lot more thicker paint and more confidence in my brushwork and I'm really loving this small angular flat brush from Raphael. When it came to this larger tree to the left, I wanted to exhibit some sort of light coming through. So I used a mixture of orange and red to lighten up the top of that tree and add some color to it which brought in the sense of sunlight sort of washing out that area of the tree. And I thought that provided kind of a cool element to the painting overall. And it sort of gives you a sense of where the sunlight is coming from. When going about these trees, I don't want to add too much detail, but yet I want to try and capture that sense of detail. So I do try and add quite a bit of the blue from the ridges behind shining through the tree. And I start with a dark mixture and basically pat on all of my foliage detail and then brighten the color up. I added a bit more orange for this tree and start to add some of those highlights. With the blue shining through, and a hint of some of those branches, it really gives a nice realistic effect. 
And this is a good example of why I use thin paint in the beginning of my process. When it comes to letting the light shine through the tree, it's not always easy to get it to layer over the top without blending and mixing in with those colors below. But if my layer is thin enough underneath, you can see the blue going on quite easily over the top. It allows me to do just that. And so the blue that I'm adding and the, the paint I'm adding right now is a lot thicker. And I'm essentially dabbing on those colors with that thick paint. And it doesn't blend much with what's already there. From here, it's just a matter of sharpening up a few of those edges. There will always be some sort of smudging and color mixing going on whenever you're applying wet on wet paint. So a little bit of precaution towards the end to just smooth out and sharpen some of those things up, fix up, up some minor imperfections can really go a long ways. Now, when observing these trees out on the landscape, there's always some variety in hue and color. Some trees are more on the red spectrum, some trees are more on the yellow or green spectrum. And so I use more orange or more red for that tree on the right. And then the tree on the left here, you can see it's looking a little more green and all that is is more of a yellow mixture. So yellow and gray rather than red and orange and gray. And after those highlights and branches are on, I try to fill some detail in between. And with this tree to the right, I also try and add a bit more yellow to the mixture to separate it from the tree behind. I also add a touch more light contacting the tree itself. With the foreground, my main objective is to try and add some more texture, some more detail, as well as some more light and color. So I use some orange and red with more white to brighten up that dirt in the foreground. And then I try to add some detail with some darker tones and some reddish tones as well. With the sage, I try to contrast that with some blue as well as some hints of violet. So I do want the detail there, but I don't want to be stuck on any details and I want to keep moving my brush quickly. And again, that mixture for that nice turquoise looking sage brush is actually light gray with a touch of cad yellow. The lighting in the tent right now is pretty difficult to work under. The direct sunlight on the tent creates this bright, warm yellow glow. And I think that's the biggest challenge that I've faced on this whole adventure of trying to teach myself plein air, paint outdoors, and work in the field. The lighting and the differences of lighting has forced me to change the way I do things. It's helped me better understand my color palette as well as how each color that I use appears to look under different types of light. And so that's been the biggest struggle, but also the biggest blessing because it's greatly improved my knowledge and understanding of my colors. And if I had one thing to recommend for anybody out there who's looking to improve their understanding of color, it's to get outside and paint under some different conditions than you normally paint. I think the changing light conditions is what's going to really propel myself and improve my work quickly over time here. And so I encourage you to give it a go if it's something that you normally don't do. Back at home, once the painting has had a chance to dry, it begins to appear matte. So I use a combination of liquid with a bit of mineral spirits mixed together to oil out the painting and restore some of the wet paint qualities and luminosity back into the painting. I use a makeup sponge to then wipe off the excess. This is now my chance to finalize the painting 
by using a small amount of glazing. I use ultramarine blue and burnt umber to darken and cool some of the shadows throughout the trees and some of the foreground. I think overall this piece came out just wonderfully and the color scheme is something that I'm particularly attracted to and I'm looking forward to exploring this color palette more in the future. Thanks for watching.